All right, channel. I got something in this week, and this is in part because I needed this for size comparisons. It's like one of the go-to. This is the Ontario Rat 2. I have the uh, Rat 1 right here. And a lot of people use these as like a size comparison. They're $25 to $35 knives, depending on the configuration and whatnot. Uh, but I wanted to just like ask the question, does this thing stand the test of time? Because I've seen this has been around for a long time. So I'm going to unbox it, take a look at it. And I uh, chose a particular one too. I uh, thought it'd be kind of cool to get this limited edition, which I don't know, it seems like it's actually been around for a while, but limited edition bone color, which initial impressions, quite good. This feels great in hand. The G10s knock down nicely on the sides. Like this feels a little small for me. I wish it was a tad bit bigger as I typically do in this size range, but right out of box does what it's supposed to. So that's cool. This other one actually took me quite a while to, um, I like sometimes I don't even feel comfortable like trying it without even opening it once to, um, for the action. So I don't know, I could probably get in and work on it, but this big one doesn't have the best action of any knife I've ever had. So my initial impression on this was not great, but my initial impression of this one's actually quite good so far. I'm sorry, I was actually holding that. Um, so it's again, a little small in hand. This is very thin for size comparison. One of the only very small knives that I actually like carrying is the bug out and it, the bug out mini. And it's like similar size. It actually, you think of it as maybe a little bit of a bigger knife, but it's actually a very similar size and that just feels very small in my bigger hands. So, um, yeah, that's uh, really nice so far. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's on a different level though from like the bug out. This is very distinctively as you handle it and deal with it in a lot of ways a nicer knife, but it doesn't feel like it's as much nicer of a knife as the cost indicates. Um, you know, the blade is a lot nicer uh, on this. This is sort of like a modified straight back drop point. Like it's a little drop to it, but it has a little jimping on it. These uh, thumb studs are actually pretty good. They're like a little pointy at the end, but not really. They're like kind of roundish feeling and nice. Um, the action was just really good there compared to what I found here. Um, you'll see I've switched these. These are, uh, these come out of box, um, uh, tip down and I've switched them to tip up carry because of actually you can't finger flick or spidey flick the knife open, uh, with, uh, tip up because the clips like right in the way on this particular design, the, the clip stands up pretty tall. So it's in the way of you getting to the, to the thumb stud. So. Um, you know, I had noticed that this was something that was going to be able to, to be deployable in that way and really wanted to make that the case. So although I feel like a more factory configuration is tip down, I have them set up tip up. Um, the other knife that quickly comes to mind feel wise is the Wee Banter in a very different price category. Um, but you know, 108 MSRP today as of the time of this video. 135. I think MSRP is even higher. It's like 150 or something, but you know, you see these for 135 on the bug out mini. I think I got this for like 30 bucks. Um, and you can see these ranging from like probably 30 to 40, depending on again, configuration. They probably get more expensive. I don't know. I didn't do a ton of research. It's not like something I'm super interested in, but I am interested in value of knife. That's like a very interesting thing to me. Like, what do you pay for what do you get? Um, I have a lot of knives that I don't feel are good value from that perspective, but I like because they're collectors. So I wanted to compare this to a few other knives that I have. So let's get rid of these less comparable knives and uh, bring out a few that are, to me, much more comparable. Uh, the first one that came to mind immediately, as soon as I felt that in hand and I did rebox it so I can kind of unbox it on this, but I haven't really done anything with that yet. It's just been sitting in the box for the most part. But the Civivi Elementum, I did another video where I talked about this particular model as this S35VN that was on sale. I don't know if it still is on uh, Blade HQ, I think it was, if I recall correctly. Um, maybe it was DLT, but I think it was Blade HQ or Knife Center or something. Um, 
So very similar, very similar size and very similar feel. You have a little bit more um, design or very, you know, it's a little less, I guess, flat or flat across the back, flat across the front. This is pretty straight. It's got a swoop, but it's a pretty straight, like simple knife, but super similar. So imagine this in a D2 configuration is probably about 50 bucks and that's like 30 bucks is kind of a fair you know, 35 is probably a fair number for it. The other one that came to mind really quickly when I got it in hand was the Kaiser uh, V3 Vigor. Um, this is a little nicer blade steel, I think, uh, N690 here versus um, the um, the D2 steel that you're going to get on the uh, on the Ontario Rat. Oh, I'm sorry, OS8. I said D2. I meant OS8 um, is, is their go-to. Uh, one and two are both OS8. They may make those again in like other blade steels, but I figure like a D2 version of the CVV would be a very comparable, like you're gonna get trade-offs that are better in OS8 and better in D2 for one another. I do think the N690 on the V3 Vigor is like a little better all around uh, blade steel and it's much nicer looking blade there. Like this is actually not quite, but like almost competitive with the bug out in terms of that blade shape and how um, it's knocked down and stuff. They kind of, I guess you wouldn't call it a swedge, but yeah, it's that's a really nice, like you can see the fit and finish of this is quite a step up. You know, similar in the in terms of being both satin finishes and stuff, but um, just an overall fit and finish. Like this is very square on the top. So that's one of the things that stood out to me right away when I got the Rat 1 was like, Wow, that is like a, you can see they cut that out of a chunk of steel. Um, but this is a very comparable size and, you know, even shape in a lot of ways. So I thought that was a good one to bring out for this. And then again, back on the high end, a, Sp a Spyderco Para 3 uh, lightweight, uh, where you save some money and um, uh, get a little bit of a lighter weight and, you know, less expensive material, again, B1N, I think, being a better place steel than OS8, but like this is getting be up in the 115 MSRP range, so we're not going to leave this in the picture for now. So I thought this would be kind of a good comparable, and I'll talk through why, what I think of each of these and why. They're all three G10 handles, so that's great. I'd say the finish is much prettier on the Kaiser here. This Kaiser, by the way, I don't think I said the price, but you can get these for around 50. I think I got it on sale for less than that, but that's about what they'll sell for. The Kaiser is kind of weird to me. Like sometimes it kind of sticks a little bit, but it's generally pretty good. Sometimes I find, yeah, no, it's, that's probably just me. I wouldn't say that. I do really like the how easy the uh, liner lock is on this. I just find that one to be very easy to actuate. Um, so one of the things I, I do like about that one is the liner lock. I think the liner lock on the CV is good. It always feels a little slippery to me. Like it's got some kind of big gym bean on it and it doesn't, it like feels almost like it's not functional. You can see I've been doing a lot of deploying knives today. Got some good, uh, I use my fingernail. A lot of people, you know, don't, they'll use their thumb, uh, but I use my fingernail, um, which is probably why I suck at it. Um, the, you know, the finish, I think on this particular CVV is a step up, but you'll normally see a, a satin finish that's very similar to those on the Elements MD2. So that's very comparable. Um, so if I'm just gonna go through and like call out one thing at a time, like we'll go off of the pocket, the, the priority score that I use, and I'm not gonna go through all 10 elements cause you'll fall asleep on this call, but we'll go through some of the big ones. So like pocket carry, uh, let's turn these over and take a look really quickly at the pocket clip. It's one of the, the biggest downsides I think of the Kaiser. It actually is functionally okay but it's very small sharp and cheap like it's just looks like cheap steel and it's thin uh you know compare it comparing it to others um and sharp i don't know what they were thinking on this this is just like a terrible design it's to me like the worst part of this particular knife aside from that i generally like this knife overall this one feels a little wider in the hand like i get a little better purchase on it when i'm deploying it than i do with the uh the rat but the pocket clip, not great here. I think the Elementum pocket clip is fine. It's nothing to write home about, but 
gives you a nice little, it's got a nice little beak on it. Um, the shape is overall good and it does its job really well. So I think this is actually probably the best pocket clip of the bunch. Um, now, there is an element of uh, the fact that uh, this one does allow you to do tip down carry if you want to. Um, but I think this would probably be the, in the middle of the two. I don't like when it faces down a little bit. Like this one barely does it, but it's, I guess it's really just flat. I like it when it turns up just a tad. I just want a little help getting over my pants. What I did find is that this one's really hard, like very hard, so it's very hard to get it over your pants unless you have thin pants that are very strong on the pocket. So the pocket clip here I'd put in the second place. Um, in terms of finish, it's nicer, but it's not much worse in terms of functionality than the Kaiser. Um, let's get this guy out of here. So in terms of cheap knives, uh, Pocket clip goes to the Elementum. The fit and finish of the handles. Um, I think the Kaiser has the better handle of the bunch. Uh, it's not necessarily much better when you're holding it than when like working with it. Like I think the finish of it's nicer, but I think the functionality of it's probably second to the uh, to the Rat. I think the Rat. I do feel like this handle is very functional. There's a great place for you to choke up if you need to. It's a little sketchy, but you can choke up on it. Do one of these, like the overall hand, in hand feeling is good other than one thing, which is that because of where this is positioned, this could be, you know, this could be done in a little different way where you get just another like quarter of an inch, maybe, or like an eighth of an inch to not have your third your fourth finger come off. This feels like a three finger kind of knife unless you're choked up on it. So that's the one thing I'll say about that. I think overall that's probably the best of the bunch in terms of handle feel, except for the fact that, and you can see it right here, just just another eighth or so that these two give you in your ability to choke up without kind of running off the back. This is just a little further back than the other two, I think. Um, whereas, you know, I feel like my finger's still on here, no problem. This one's a little choky, but it's still on there. It's kind of weird because it looks longer, but it feels like my finger's falling off just a little more than the other two on the uh, on the rat. It's not a huge difference, but just if you could get another eighth or quarter inch out of that, that'd be nice. So feel in hand, I go maybe the Elementum. These two I kind of think are kind of tied and. This guy kind of follows. I think the, the finish of the G10 is actually really nice on the rat, surprisingly. But the, you know, overall feel in hand, probably give it to one of these two, I guess. Um, blade steel, assuming D2 for the Elementum, um, I'd give that to the Kaiser. Um, keep me honest, maybe you know this steel better than I do. It's the only knife I have in this steel, but I feel like an N690 from what I've researched when, back when I bought this knife, I recall that being a step up from like a D2. I could be wrong. I'm sure there are trade-offs, like the D2's probably got better, maybe better edge retention or hardness or something like that. Um, but I think the toughness and well-roundedness and um, stain resistance, corrosion resistance is a little better here. Um, so I talk about hand feel, pocket feel, or like my two top elements. Cosmetics, like just straight away, I go to the Kaiser on this. Um, probably the Elementum and then the, like, especially with that blade. But if I'm looking at the, the handles, I'd probably call these two a tie on cosmetics and this a winner. If I look at the blades, I give these two a tie. But on the D2, Actually, it's kind of funny. A D2 drop point Elementum, I actually like. It's one of my favorite looking blades. I did get rid of mine recently because I just wasn't using it. And I figured I had two of them and neither of them getting used. So I might as well keep the one with the S35EN. The Tanto, I just don't really like the way this looks. It kind of captures the light weird. And it's it's cool in its own way. But like for my style, I, I'd probably give that one to the Elementum followed by the Kaiser or maybe even a tie the Kaiser does have a really nice looking uh, blade just in terms of blade cosmetics. So overall looks, I'd probably go like one, two, three.
uh, personally. This is very subjective, of course. Um, quality, uh, fit and finish quality. Um, let me go through them one more time here. Voice of Evie really does a good job. You know, they're all pretty darn close. I'd probably call it a three-way tie, to be honest. Um, maybe a little edge to the Civivi. I just, maybe just a slight edge over the other two. But in in certain elements, I actually go with the Kaiser. So I'm like, it's probably a wash. I think all three have a really good quality. Um, in, in terms of like, the manageability, or maybe not the words manageability, but um, like maintenance, you got a lot more screws on the Kaiser. So like, that's kind of annoying. I'm sorry, I said Kaiser. On the rats, that's kind of annoying for maintenance. Um, the other two are just one, two, one, two. Uh, really easy. I I think one of the first knives I really broke down uh, was the Elementum in like my, sort of my third phase. I, if you remember from my early videos, if any of you watched my early videos, I have this old MTAC that was like the one I broke down in one of the videos. Actually, I didn't break it down on that video. I did it between videos about this knife, but I had not maintained it. And it's still pretty close, but it was completely rubbing against the side here, which was kind of funny. Right now, it's still not centered. I don't know if I'll ever be able to center this knife again, um, just based on the beating that it's taken. But um, the maintenance and the ease of breakdown for that, and I assume that Kaiser as well, is just really good. Whereas I think the rat, you know, looks like there's just a little more going on there and it's probably a little harder. Um, but this one would definitely be another to sit in this group of super cheap knives. I don't think they make it anymore, but this MTech USA is a really nice knife for probably 25 bucks or something like that. I don't remember what I got it for. Maybe I paid a little more for this given the uh, finish I'm looking at. Maybe this was more like 35 bucks or something when I got it. But um, anyway. Um... One of the last elements I would look at, um, fit finish, I mean price, so value. I think I'll just make that the last one. Um, that's where I think the rat wins pretty significantly because these two are, you know, if you get a D2 Elementum and this version of the V3 Vigor, these are both like $50 knives and this is more like a $30, $35 knife. So the this is where it kind of wins out on the value. Like, I don't think you can beat it with these two. I think you're getting a little more at these two, but not enough to say that I think this is the highest value knife. That one on sale ended up being beating it for me because I got it for about the same price. Um, I don't remember where I got that on sale. Maybe Blade HQ or um, DLT or something, but... This V3 Vigor at the price I paid for it is a nicer knife than that, but not from a value perspective. This is kind of why I created this video is I was like, wow, this is just like a really nice value knife for what you get. Like if the, you're an average person, you're not collecting and you're looking to spend money on a knife that will last and do its job and, you know, use it all the time. But maybe it's even if it is an EDC, even if you do use it all the time. Gosh, it's kind of hard to beat this from a value perspective at call it 30, 35 dollars. There are some knives that are starting to compete pretty well on that. Like the QSP Penguin and um, Parrot would probably be the only other two that would compete. And they're just definitely different knives than this. Um, but those would be the only two that kind of come to mind that can compete with that right now on value. There, there's probably 500 other knives that I just don't know about. But in terms of like popular brands like Kaiser, Civivi, Ontario here, um, QSP, like those are kind of in the same ballpark. So I do feel like this edges out the, the Civivis a little bit here on, on total value. So I think you get more out of this, but you pay more for it and it's not one-to-one -one necessarily. It's like a slight, I'm only talking about maybe 10% better value. I'm not talking about 100%. So uh, versus, you know, this for instance, it would be a much lower value knife for what you're getting in my opinion. There's a lot of things that make this a much better knife than the ones that are shown here. Um, but I don't know, that's a better value knife, if that makes sense, than those. And in fact, it probably has the crappiest scale, so you probably want to upgrade those anyways, and it becomes a really bad value. Um, 
this one would be the only like hundred dollar knife that I feel like competes on value because you're getting an S35 VN blade steel and a much better all around knife. The V banter, I mean, the thing is, it's funny because when this came out, it arguably was one of the best value knives. And since then, a bunch of knives have come out for like, call it 60 to $80 that compete pretty directly with this. Um, but, you know, this to me is like for the $100 range, a very hard one to compete with. You can just, it, it works really well and, uh, you know, kind of sits in this size range and everything. But yeah, I really like this knife. Um, so that's about it. Just wanted to do a little cheap knife bake off because you see, you know, I buy knives where the taxes cost more than the three of these combined. So um, don't see a lot of that on this channel, but I do have a lot of cheap knives and I started more with like cheap knives and I'm actually kind of passionate about cheap knives. I watch a lot of cheap knife videos still. Um, you know, call them cheap knife, call them value knife, whatever you want to do, entry level knives. Um, and I do think that all three of these have their place and all three of them are very good choices for people. Um, when I got back into phase three, the Elementum D2 was like the one I got me really back into knives going, wow, this is like a lot better than knives were 20 years ago for 50 bucks. Um, so that kind of, kind of caught my eye, I call it 15 years ago, even. Um, I think that the technology and their ability to deliver a really quality knife has gone up a lot. I don't know when this Ontario rat was built or created or when that hit the market. Um, I have to do some research on that. I assume this knife's at least like five to seven years old, if not much older. Um, doesn't feel like something that was just recently created, but it also doesn't feel like super out of date either. So um, yeah, I mean, overall, good impression. Kind of go back to the final thought on the Ontario, which is that for $30, it's a damn good knife and I highly recommend it. Um, in fact, it's one where I, when I bought it, I was kind of like, am I crazy? Like, why do I have all these knives for all this money? I'll throw a little bit of a different light on it here and give you a little bit of a different view. Let me clean it up now that I have more light on it. You can see the smudges. Can't have this beauty smudged, come on. Um, but this is the one where when I bought it, I was kind of like, ugh, this does remind me of how crazy some of the things I buy are. Um, my most expensive knives are over $2,000, um, and I have a number of knives in the hundreds to thousand range that, you know, like this makes look really bad from a value perspective. So that said, I get other levels of value out of knives and, you know, to each their own. Um, there are things that you get, and a lot of these more expensive knives you can buy and then resell for a similar price. So like at the end of the day, you're not going to probably have a very good time reselling an Ontario rat on the secondary market. Maybe you can buy this for $35 and sell it for $20 or something, right? So you're, <laughs> from that perspective, it's not like a good investment. It can keep money in your bank though. So if uh, liquidity is important to you, I can't think of a much better knife than this. So that's kind of my final thought. The ultimate knife for your bank account, Ontario Rat 2 really nice and i actually really like this bone uh limited edition i got this one on amazon you can probably find it in other places but uh feel free to check it out maybe i'll link it in the comments or something oh one last thing really nicely centered so hey they did a good job on this knife good job ontario i know this is a totally like uh time inappropriate review of this knife because it's way after the fact that you made it but still appreciate you how about that all right uh, that's it for now take care and we'll see you on the next one please like subscribe or comment if i got anything wrong here all right bye